Um, I'd like to introduce Dimitri Salito of Salito Promotions. Uh, Dimitri, what a fight we have in front of us. Thank you, Dan. It is truly a tremendous fight. And uh, it, it's, it's a tremendous fight and a tremendous event because Kalusha Shields is going to be making her UK debut. We're all planning, obviously, in a row to fight Savannah Marshall, but we know that Emma Cozen is uh, no walk in the park. She's a tough contender. As I look at her uh, Zoom, I see so many belts in the back of her. She's undefeated. She's number one contender. And uh, just like we have a story, a story about Clarissa and have a lot of fans in the United States, you know that Emma Cozen has been a big star in Europe and in her country. And uh, uh, being an undefeated fighter, you know, you cannot take anyone for granted. And I'm she's coming to fight. With that being said, Clarissa has left no stone unturned in her preparations. And uh, if, if you look at her screen, it says gold iPhone. And uh, Clarissa, is, uh, Clarissa is on a different level. And I believe that with all due respect to Emma Cozen, who's a tremendous fighter, I believe that Clarissa is going to shine and, and, and uh, look better than ever before in this, in this very exciting fight. And, you know, great fighters make, when great fighters are faced with stiff competition, they race to the next level. We saw with Clarissa in many of her fights uh, with, with Christina Hammer, where she just uh, went into a different phase as a fighter and, and grew that night. And I believe the same thing will happen with Emma Cozen, and it will send a very strong mission, message to Savannah Marshall, uh, who know what's coming for her later on in the year. So we are very, very, very excited uh, about February 5th. You mentioned them both there. I'd like to introduce Emma Cozen. Uh, Emma, you know, fantastic to have you here, and, and what a massive fight that you're in. Yeah, thank you. First of all, I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, hello to Clarissa and to Dmitri. Uh, it's um, it's great to be here, and yeah, I got a huge opportunity to fight Clarissa, I, and I want to uh, use that opportunity, of course. I worked hard for the for the past year, and I know I made a lot of progress, and I want to show it. I'd now like to introduce somebody who probably needs no introduction at all. Uh, the the what many people consider the greatest women of all time, Clarissa Shields. Uh, Clarissa, uh, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Uh, what a big fight we have. Yes, it is. Um, before I start, I just want to thank Boxer and Sky Sports and my promoter, Demetri Salida, for um, you know working with you guys to get this opportunity started. I want to thank Emma for being an opponent and being so prestigious in her uh, record, 21-0. You know, with 11 knockouts, that's probably the best record that I've fought against. And um, I just look forward to coming to the UK, uh, returning back to boxing, and just showing why I'm one of the top pound for pound women, and uh, just giving you great, uh, giving you guys a great, a really, really great, great fight. Well, I said it before, but you're you're widely considered the the greatest woman of all time. Is there any chance of you overlooking Emma Cozen whilst chasing the potential Savannah Marshall fight? No, I've I've never done that. You know, usually with my fights, we always have somebody who we look in, you know, like we're going forward to. You know, before uh, I fought against Christina Hammer, it was Hannah, uh, it was Hannah Gabriels, right? And I made sure that I focused completely on Hannah Gabriels, and then I focused on Hannah Rankin, and then I fought Christina Hammer. I focused strictly on who was in front of me and who has earned the right to get inside the ring with me. Emma Cozen is my mandatory. So I have a lot of respect for her, and I have and I have trained very, very hard for this camp. Right now, I'm in Vegas, and I even had some training with Floyd Mayweather while I'm here. So I'm not taking Emma Cozen lightly because I know that this is a huge opportunity for her, and uh, she wants the upset. And my job is to let her know to make sure that she don't get the upset, and that I have a very, very strong um, performance in the UK. You mentioned there that you, you were with Floyd Mayweather. We saw you in the camp. Um, did you get any tips? Do you, do you have any, you know, motivation from it? Does it add anything to, to, to your performance, potentially? Um, trying to with Floyd Mayweather had made my confidence. If my confidence wasn't already off the roof, I mean, it's definitely in the sky now, you know. Um, he watched me train, and he's very, very, you know, fond of my skills, fond of my power. And uh, he'll be... He'll be flying to the UK to actually watch the fight in person. So now I know that I really have to put on a really, really great you know, show and just show everyone that um, if Floyd Mayweather feels that I'm the greatest one of all time, then there's nobody who can disagree. And I'm just going to prove him right like I've been proving myself right this whole time. 
A couple of questions for, for Emma. Now, Emma, you're fighting in the UK for the first time as a pro. Uh, how excited are you to, to, to meet the British fans and, and to put on a good show? Yeah, I've heard that uh, they are great fans, uh, great crowds. And yeah, I can't wait to experience that. And yeah, I'm sure it will be awesome. And that's it. They will look and see the great fight between us two. And yeah. I'm sure they will enjoy it. And all, all fighters are confident. Um, how confident are you of beating Clarissa Shields? Yeah, well, I've never been prepared as I am right now. And I wouldn't be stepping with, in the ring with her if I didn't think that I'm capable of uh, beating her. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident uh, as I should be. Right. Um, at this point, I think it is a good time to to open up for the media Q&A. So I will pass over to Andrew Roberts. And if you are in the waiting room or if you're here, if you hit the raise your hand button, it will mean that Andrew will be able to see you and, and, and call you and then you'll be able to, to give your question. So over to you, Andrew. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks very much, Dan. We'll go ahead and get started uh, with Ben Ransom. Ben, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks, Andrew. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Clarissa. Hi, Emma. Um, Clarissa, if I could start with you, um, can you give us a bit of an insight into how your camp has gone um, up there with the Mayweathers in, in Las Vegas? You know, if I had to put a word, you know, for this camp, I would just say, you know, uncomfortable. I've made sure that I got that I've gotten out of my comfort zone for this fight. You know, uh, my last boxing match was in March, and I've been doing MMA since March. But it's just like coming back to the box, I want to make sure that I have my tools and everything. So going to, you know, the Mayweather gentleman Ed and Coach GT and my team has really um, sharpened up a lot of my tools. And I've even been able to get some altitude training, run some mountains. I'm 26 years old. I'm very, very well accomplished, but I've never ran a mountain in my life. So to run, you know, in 12,000 feet of elevation and to be able to run five miles, to still be able to breathe after, to be able to box 10 rounds down here in Vegas, and to even get some corners from Floyd Mayweather, I feel like I've prepared very, very hard for this fight, and that's why I'll come out victorious. What are you expecting from the UK fans? It will be your first fight in front of them since, I guess, London 2012. I'm expecting them to be very excited to see me. Um, after winning the Olympics 2012, I think when I walked out there, you know, for my gold medal match, it was just an explosive crowd. I think that they have really, really great boxing fans. And they love the and they love their boxers, right? So even though I wasn't from the UK, but I did represent the USA well, and uh, it was a lot of fans in the building to see me fight. So I'm excited to come back to the UK to show my skills, to show how I improved in 2012, and just um, bring that USA swagger. Emma, can I ask you a question as well? Speaking then of that USA swagger, how do you plan to dethrone Clarissa? Well, I won't show you all the cards I have, but yeah, I'm highly motivated. I want this win. Uh, I don't think I ever wanted this as, as much as I do that. Uh, and yeah, with intelligence, focus and motivation. And do you think you're in the best shape of your life at this point? Yeah, yeah. I've, I made a huge progress in the past year. I've been training from five to six uh, hours a day. And I, I think I did about 500 rounds of sparring this year. So yeah, I feel great and prepared. Well, we can't wait to have you both over. Clarissa, just one final one to you before I hand on. Um, I just want to ask you, we've spoken a lot about your rivalries, not least about a Marshall, of course, but also Jake Paul, I just wonder, when it comes to rivalries, what do you get out of them as a fighter? And do they spur you on in any way? I mean, we all have our different reasons on how we get motivated. Um, I just really won't smoke with anybody who won't smoke with me. You know, I just don't turn down. Um, you know, people talking trash to me, I'm like, um, the best way to get something handled is to get inside the ring and take care of it to me. Like, that's how I make peace. So when people talk trash to me, I talk trash back to hopefully that that leads us getting inside the ring and, you know, taking care of business and seeing who's the baddest. So, um, you know, rivalries, you know, are entertaining, but I mean business. So any girl talk trash to me, I talk trash back. I would love to get inside the ring with her 
and shut all of them up. Anybody that talk trash to me, I want to punch them in the face. I'll wait to see you soon. Thanks, Carissa. Thanks, Emma. I do want to add to that. Um, you know, Jake Paul is trying to be an American boxing superstar, and Clarissa Shields is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and all that she has done for women's boxing, Jake Paul, as, as a gentleman, and you know, I know that uh, in the UK, you guys, you guys, uh, maybe the origins of chivalry and being an honorable person, he, he has to have respect for Clarissa Shields' accomplishments inside the ring as a professional, as an amateur, her background, where she came from, and what she's been through to get to this level, to raise the sport of boxing. And I truly believe, uh, you know, Serrano and all the other great champions are at this level and getting paid more and getting the exposure they need because of Clarissa's initial success. And um, so Jake should be uh, supportive of Clarissa. And, uh, you know, if you don't have anything good to say, just don't say it. <laughs> Agreed. All right. Thanks, Dimitri. Uh, next up, we'll have Cynthia Conti. Cynthia, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hey, Clarissa, this is, oops. You there, Cynthia? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hey, this message, or the, this uh, question is for Clarissa. It's funny when, uh, from Ring TV, it's funny, I remember speaking to you back, I think, during the last HBO show, I think you were fighting Hannah Gabriels, and we talked about you always fighting on Twitter. I'm like, you can't fight on Twitter because you can't beat everyone. And it's funny now that I see you still fight, but your words, you choose your words wisely. So I just want to, I want to, I want to, I want to congratulate you on that. Now you're going into this fight in the UK against Emma. Can you, this, this question is for both you and Emma. What's something that is a great attribute that both of you are going to bring in the ring to each other? Um, you know, for me, I feel like I'm going to bring that experience. I'm going to bring their world championship level. You know, Emma is 21 and 0 with 11 knockouts, but she hasn't fought the people that I fought against in just my 11 fights. She hasn't fought those top tier champions who are champions for nine plus years, who have great records, who, you know, have been champions in multiple weight classes. She hasn't done that. So I think that that's going to be a, a bad part. Well, that's going to play bad up in her part. But I've taken on the biggest challenges earlier in my career because I had the skills and the power to do so. I think that when she gets in there with me, she's going to see that experience. Um, she's going to see that, you know, that I've been here with the top and that um, it's just different. You know, when you when you watch film, you know, you feel a certain way. And you feel, oh, you can do this and you can do that. But every time I fought, I brought a different fighter to the ring. You know, I'm not the same fighter who I was when I fought against Hannah Gables, Christina Hammer, Marie Eve DeCare, you know, I always make sure that I improve my performances and perform the way that I want to. So I think that she's gonna to have to, you know, deal with a lot of with a lot of different styles from me and also deal with the new power and the new speed that I have. And um, she's gonna see why I'm the greatest woman of all time. And Emma, what do you think um, when you step in the ring with Clarissa, what do you think she's gonna bring? Well, yes, yeah, she said she's she's a great fighter. Of course, she fought a lot of great champions, but you don't need uh, a lot of fights or even high level fights to be experienced. Uh, I did a lot of that in training. Uh, I have a great team behind me, and I know I did great. Uh, she she doesn't know me as she thinks she does. I also have some different styles. I can change them in from round to round. Uh, doesn't matter to me. And I know if I have that focus, which I have like for the past year, that I can beat anyone in my heart. Okay. And Clarissa, we all know. Hello. Hello. Clarissa, uh, we all know that you have made the move into MMA. Coming back into boxing after your first professional MMA loss, what kind of, what what newfound love have you found for boxing when you came back? Did you see it a little bit differently? No, you know, MMA, I did that for myself. You know, I did that because the women in boxing can't challenge me. I wanted to challenge myself, so I went to MMA. I'm not gonna say, you know, oh, the split decision loss to MMA made me come back to boxing. I've been doing both 
at the same time. I fought boxing in March. Mm-hmm. I had two MMA fights, and now I'm fighting again, you know, up in um, January. You know, February has been postponed so dang much. But it's like that's the plan to continue to do MMA, continue to do boxing. And I've never lost my love for boxing. Mm-hmm. You know, boxing is my first love, and that's why I'm the greatest at it. You know, um, I think MMA was something that I that I had to do for myself. It really wasn't for anybody else, you know, because my promoter didn't want me to do it. My family didn't want me to do it. It was all me. And I think that um, even my last fight, you know, to not have any amateur experience in MMA, just to turn pro and to be fighting on a large platform as ESPN and being the main event, that um, it just shows that I'm a different kind of athlete and that when you're a different kind of athlete, you can do different kind of things. So MMA isn't over. And I'm going to continue in MMA. Hey there. Uh, my first question is for Caressa. Uh, of course, there was a, a big story a couple of weeks ago. I guess Dimitri could answer this too, I, I suppose, about this these emails that were leaked with regards to, to Jake Paul. How much did you know about that before the story broke? Listen, this, Sorry, this, 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 hold on, Dimitri, before you start. This ain't about Jake oh. Paul. This is about Caressa Shields and Emma Cozy. So... As 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 it was as it was said, I don't email about this stuff. I have a manager. I have a promoter. Their job is to make opportunities for me. What you need to know is I was supposed to be on a, um, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones on the card, not ever under what the what the fuck who called me? Oh, sorry, not uh, not ever under Jake Paul. So mm-hmm. let's get that clear. I don't know what the email said, and I really don't care. But I'm not. We're not going to talk about that and give him um, the shine of this press conference. This is about me. This is about Emma. This is about world title. This is about elite box. This elite boxers. So I'm just going to leave that there. And Dimitri, you don't even have to speak on it. Managers do they do their job. Promoters do their job. Fighters train and, and get ready for fights. That's what we do. Can I ask you about elite boxers then, and and two others in the division or in in not in your division, but uh, as a few weight classes below. Do you who do you believe will win in this Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor fight? Oh man, it's such a great fight. You know, you have a seven-time division world champion Amanda Serrano versus two-time division world champion undisputed Katie Taylor in Olympic gold medals. Right? I think it's one of the biggest women's boxing matches because of their accomplishments. You know, people ask me, you know, is is me and Savannah Marshall fight, you know, bigger than a like, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano. And I just don't, I just don't think it is, you know, people can disagree, but I feel like all their accomplishments mesh together. It'd be a great fight. And I think Amanda Serrano will win the fight by a split decision. Thank you very much for your time. Yep. All right. Thanks, Donna. Uh, next up, we'll have questions from Jim Conlon. Jim, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hi, Clarissa. Uh, great speaking to you again there in terms of uh, uh, your your upcoming career. Uh, Clarissa, in terms of um, the upcoming challenges now, coming back to boxing uh, again, what are the main accomplishments that you want to sort of achieve now in the next year or so? Because you mentioned you want to move away for MMA to prove yourself. What, coming back to boxing, what's, what's the next step for Clarissa Shields? Um, well, first step is February 5th, Emma Colson. Um, After that, um, hoping to get inside the ring with Savannah Marshall next. I, she has, I fight for great fifth. She fights some time after that. I win, she win, we fight, right? So that's the plan uh, right now. And then after that, um, I do have some business to handle in MMA. So um, I'm going to get back to MMA training and just um, keep, keep improving there in 2023. Boxing may not boxing may not see me in 2023 because I'm going to be spending time getting ready for the PFL um, profession um, for the PFL league where I'll be able to uh, compete for a million dollars. 
And uh, just Clarissa, just back on the potential, the possibility of you fighting Savannah, Savannah Mitchell, and obviously Katie Taylor versus uh, Amanda Serrano. Do you think maybe boxing in this current era, in this current decade now, is really at the prominence of female boxing that it can equal sort of the male equivalents of your Tyson Fury, your Anthony Joshua's, your Deontay Wilders? That these are the big fights that everyone wants to see, and the top women are now getting it on with each other you know i just think all the network that's putting on women's boxing now i think that the right fights are being made you know Layla ali and ann wolf never fought each other but i think up in this up in this uh era you're going to get the fights that you want to see you're going to get the amanda serrano versus katie taylor you're going to get the clarissa shields versus savannah marshall you know you're going to get um you know you got Jessica McCaskill versus Cecilia Brockies, right? So so you get those big fights um, that you want to see. And I'm just happy that it got girls that's coming up because you, you only know, like, maybe, like, the top 10 of us now. But there are girls that's coming up who are great, too, and they're going to make a lot of noise. And it's going to be, you know, younger fighters coming up who are going to challenge the older fighters, you know. And I'm becoming an older fighter now, like, as I'm 26 and I'll be 27 next month. And... It's going to be some girls who are 22 and 21 coming off the Olympics who are going to want to challenge me. So it's a lot of, you know, women who are ready to fight. Yeah, women's boxing is on fire right now. You're getting the fights you want. All right. Thanks, Jim. Next up, uh, we'll take questions from October Red. October, please unmute yourself. and You can ask your question. Hi there, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, Clarissa. Two times Olympic gold medalist, 12 times world champion, three weight division champion. What our honor it is to speak to you. Clarissa, I want to touch on something that you mentioned in one of your earlier interviews, and it's about your MMA loss and how you dealt with that. It's kind of similar to what AJ said about his loss to um, music. He said he could only watch it to round four. And I remember you saying that you didn't want to watch it. As a champion, mm -hmm. someone that holds all of those belts, how do you then begin to process a loss and think about coming back, having that champion mindset to still push forward? Well, you know, like with the fight being so close, yeah. um, that was the disappointment. It wasn't really like the loss, right? Like, you know, I didn't get knocked down. I didn't get submitted, you know. I just went in there and lost a very, very close fight that a lot of people felt like should have went my way, that I should have got the decision. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's still a loss on the MMA record. And, um, you know, when I watched the fight, only thing I can say is that I was happy to see my improvements, right? From the first fight to my second MMA fight, so many improvements. And uh, that's how I was able to just kind of take it. Like, you know what, yeah, you know, I lost a very, very close fight, but... I still have something to build off of. Like, it wasn't a terrible performance. And um, me and my team can build, like, we can build off of that. And we know what the weaknesses are. We know what my strong points are. We know what we need to work on. And uh, just a little bit more on my part, maybe with the wrestling or with, you know, something would have got me the decision. But I felt like I won the first two rounds and, and uh, Abigail won the last round. So I thought that I won the fight, but... You know, just watching it, I'm always telling myself, like, Ugh, I should have done this. I should have done that. But, um, you know, you kind of just got to leave in the past, you know, focus on what's in front of you. And I uh, just continue to, you know, chase greatness. And that's what I'm doing right now. All right. Thank you very much for that question. Our next question will come from Suzanne with All-Star Boxing, Women in Boxing. Hi, sorry, Andrew, I wanna, I wanna, I, sorry, I want to add to that answer uh, that Clarissa just gave. Sure. So it, uh, it's a bit of a different comparison with Anthony Joshua losing to Usyk and Clarissa fighting in MMA because the MMA is a completely different sport. A better comparison would be Michael Jordan after he won the NBA championships that he went to play baseball and he had challenges playing baseball yeah. because it's a new sport and it's a new game. So yeah. uh, the fact that Clarissa lost in MMA has no absolutely no impact on her record or her, her skills as a boxer. She's the best boxer in the world. Uh, I feel deserves to be in the men's pound for pound list. And, uh, and whatever Clarissa will learn on a personal way is great, but, uh, but it's a different sport. So as it relates to boxing, Clarissa is undefeated, unbeatable, and, and the accomplished fighter that she is, re regardless of what happened in the MMA cage. Agreed. 
To follow on from that then quickly, Dimitri, it just in relation sure. to the mindset of dealing with a loss and moving forward with regards mm -hmm. to, it doesn't matter what sport it is, it's having the mindset to still push forward and come back and win. Well, I mean, Clarissa has, through her life, personal life and professional life, and has shown that she is she's a fighter through and through and she overcomes obstacles. And that's why, to me, she's a symbol of strength and, and really a hero for the people. And sports is just the way that you portray it. And, and uh, we have a chance to follow her story. You know, when, you, when, you're in your, when you're at your home and you play pool and you lose to your friend, you also feel a little bit upset that you, that you lose. But it's, not, but it's not your profession. It's not what you do. So like Michael Jordan was the greatest of all time playing basketball, then he went to play baseball and he had his challenges. That's a different sport. It's a team sport. There's a ball. You still have to get it in, but it's a different goal. It's a different sport. So while MMA is a combat sport, but, you know, if, if can Clarissa go and compete in a, in a, in a judo tournament or in a jiu-jitsu tournament? So it's very similar. It's a different sport, even though there's some similarities because it's one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a completely different sport. And, and uh, whatever skills she's shown has absolutely no impact on her boxing career. If, right. if, if, anything, if anything, it should show the writers and the media and the fans what kind of athlete and what kind of person Clarissa is that she's pushing herself. And really, through taking this risk, is raising women's sports and women's boxing to the next level, as she has done throughout her career. All right. Thank you for that, Dimitri and October Red. Uh, we'll get back to uh, Suzanne. Suzanne, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. No problem. Thank you both. I'm delighted to speak to you. Um, something that you've touched on previously is that women are underrepresented, especially in boxing in the media. So I just wanted to know how you think we can, as everyone on this call, improve that for UK and European US fighters coming through, um, especially in women. The other thing is around equality in the sport. Do you really think we're there yet? Um, and if not, again, how do we improve it? That could go to well, Emma or, or you, Clar Clarissa, either. I'm sorry, you got to repeat the whole question. I thought you were talking to Dimitri. Oh, no, no problem at all, Clarissa. So it was just around women um, in, in media, how we kind of promote it better as UK companies and UK promoters. At the moment, you're quite obviously controversial. You're outspoken, you're confident, you're dominant. Do you think UK boxers are too humble, especially the women as well? Are we too nice? Is that why the women aren't getting the coverage that they need? How do we do it better in the UK and in Europe? You know, I can't say that it matters if you're, you know, humble or if you're, you know, cocky and, and, and if that's why you get, you know, more viewers or get more fans. I'll just say that um, the women at the top are sometimes, I feel like, like, like they're scared to speak up about things you know, that's going on in the sport because of the backlash we may get from, you know, the people in charge, right? And um, I think that the more that you let the fans, you know, get to know you and get to see you and, you know, get to hear from you and hear your point of view, that that's like, like, the, like the fans find that relatable. Like, honestly, um, Katie is, to me, I think Katie is super, super humble, very, very sweet person. She goes in there and she handles business, but it's like nobody really knows anything about her personally. And I think that that's something that um, could build, build women's boxing, just to hear her point of view, hear her thoughts, you know, about the three minute rounds, or if we should go 12 rounds, two minutes, or 12 rounds, three minutes, or three minutes for 10 rounds, you know, stuff of that nature. But I don't think that all the women in the UK are uh you know soft spoken i mean we see savannah marshall speaking out more uh emma cozen speaks out um uh, myself amanda serrano has always speak about the inequalities of, of you know women's boxing myself you know just even though i was i was getting paid the most about one point um i was still you know trying to make sure that i brought other women to the top with me to where they can get a payday and where they can be known but you know i think that us is you know, when we have to know that um, we, we just got to be voices in every room and we got to support each other. You know, a lot of women are you know, hating on the other, even if they're not in their same weight class. And I think that that's um, part of the problem, too. But I have some great supporters some great fans um, and the media really, you know, likes to talk to me. So I've just been building a few things, you know, and adding a thing or two up on YouTube. Like with my YouTube channel, I have 26K followers just trying to like 
build that, continue to build my fan base, do things that's different, and let the fans know that they can get to know me. Like they can ask me questions, they can DM me, and kind of being like interactive on social media. Like that's a big thing right now. But it doesn't matter whether you're cocky or humble. People are going to watch you because they want to watch you. People watch me because they don't like me, because they do like me, because I'm the greatest one of all time, and they think I'm not. Like. People are going to watch if you have great skills. So I think the right fights are being made in that women's boxing is definitely growing right now. All right. Thank you, Suzanne. Our next question comes from Kat Lucas. We have time for just a couple more here, Kat. So one question, please. Hi, Clarissa. Hi, Emma. Hope you're both well. Um, just following, following on from what Suzanne said there, um, Clarissa, you've been speaking about what an exciting time it is for women's boxing in particular. Um, and you've spoken a lot in the past about... Um, equal pay as well. Um, I don't know what you can say about this fight in particular, but do you hope that fighting on a card of this magnitude in the UK will help with that cause? I think fighting on a card of this magnitude will will help women's boxing. I mean, Liam Williams the Chris Eubank, they, they aren't world champions, but they're known worldwide, right? Because of their fights and who they've been inside the ring with. And when you put the women on there, on the undercard, it just gives us we're going to get some of their fans and their, and their fans are going to become our fans. And I think that every boxing car should have women on the co-main or like the TV opener to where they'll be anticipating like the lead up to the big fight. So everybody wants to see the grudge match with Liam Williams and Chrissy Bank, including me. So after our fight, me and Emma, I'll be running back to dressing room, put my clothes on because I don't want to see the grudge match between those two guys because the beef is real. Um, so this is great. And I think that, um, you know, just one step at a time. And I think that all the women in boxing, Katie, Amanda Serrano, um, myself, all the girls, you know, who are at the top, Chantel Cameroon, I think that we are all, um, you know, playing our part in taking the big fights, um, you know, and even though it's not equal pay yet, we're still making the best fights. And uh, we're going to build our viewership up and people are still going to want to watch us fight and just, you know, support us. So I think that women's boxing, like I said, is going in the right direction and definitely fighting on big cards, you know, is a huge thing for women's boxing. Just like the UFC and even the PFL, there's always a woman fighting on the card. Boxing needs to give with the program and every boxing card needs to have a woman on there. All right. Thank you very much, Pat. Our next question is going to come from Jonathan Nagioff. Jonathan, please unmute yourself and you can ask a question. Hey, this is a question for Clarissa. Um, going back to your last fight, becoming two-way undisputed champion, the first uh, male or female, can you just sum up what that achievement meant to you and do you feel like you got the credit you deserve for that? Well, fighting against Marie Eve Decare was a huge challenge. I was coming off of a year layoff. Um, it was the most stressful time in the year for the whole world, you know, as we went through the pandemic of COVID. Um, but fighting against Marie De Care was definitely worth it. You know, I did my, I did what I could do in that fight. I felt a lot of ring rust during that fight. Um, that's why I put more time into this training camp and more sparring and just doing some different things in camp. But, um, I'm the only boxer to make the Guinness World Records in, you know, 2022. And that, and that means a lot. Uh, have I gotten the recognition? Um, you know, you always feel like you can get more, you know, people can do more, say more or whatever. But my accomplishments I make are for me, you know, and if people choose to admire them and choose to, um, you know, praise me for them, then, you know, thank, you know, thank you to them. But um, I'm just going to continue to take the biggest fights, you know, and as far as in, I don't think all the women in boxing, any of us are getting our, you know, the respect that we want just yet. Like we're getting the respect, but it's still like, it's not equal pay. It's just so much that needs to be done with this boxing. But like I said, we're all playing our part. And um, I'm just gonna continue to break records and just chase greatness because that's what I wanna do. All right, great. Our last question from the press is gonna come from Rob Hogan with the Boxing Voice. Rob, please unmute yourself and you can ask a question. <laughs> Evening, Clarissa and Evo. Evening. 
Uh, Clarissa, was the motivation for you to try or, or join MMA because you've been so dominant in your boxing career, obviously just the one defeat, and will you now be looking to do even more, to say maybe look to become a multiple weight champion, so even more than three you've already done, like I think you mentioned possibly moving down to welterweight before it, you know, before it's too too difficult, and then maybe move up again, maybe as high as light heavyweight. Are those things you've possibly got in mind? You had said one defeat at my MMA. No, sorry, the one defeat as an amateur. Yeah, see, see, the amateur stuff don't count because Savannah Marshall lost twenty times in amateurs, and we don't talk about the girls that beat her. So I'm undefeated. I'm an undefeated world champion. So that's first, mm -hmm. and then secondly, um, with me being an undefeated world champion being the greatest one of all time. Um, moving forward, Emma Cozen first. Um, but I have so many things I want to accomplish in boxing. I want to fight three to four times this year before I start focusing on MMA. And um, of course, I want to stay undefeated. I want to be, I think I want to end my career at being a five-time division world champ. I believe that I can fight at 147 and maybe a 175. I was thinking about 140, but that's just too little. You know, I think that's too little. So I would like to try, to try my chances at 147 and possibly 175 and become a five-time division world champion and just fight the best and, you know, make the best fights. Whoever they feel is the best and near my weight class is 168, 160, 154, 147, 175. I just want to fight the best and um, just kind of have a great career and make a great life for myself and my in my, you know, future and everything. All right, great. Thank you, Ron. Thank you to all the press that joined us today. That's all we have time for question-wise. Um, I'm going to turn things back over to Dan to get closing comments from Emma and Clarissa. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I will go to, to Emma Cozen first. Uh, Emma, a lot of media attention, as you can see. Uh, do you have any, you know, closing comments that you want to say to the media, to the fans, or to Clarissa? Yeah, that uh, I wish uh, Clarissa good luck with everything, safe travel, uh, and without any injuries. Uh, and yeah, I just want to say that I think the world would want to know me after this fight. I will show my, my best. Uh, I will give my best. And yeah, I expect a tough fight, brutal 10 rounds, and yeah, really. I'm so happy for the, for this to be happening, happening, and yeah, just really nervous to get in the fight and to do my best and to win. Thank you, uh, Clarissa. Uh, you've been here time and time again. Do you have anything that you want to say to Emma? Emma, I'll need your luck, and then secondly, I'm going to destroy you February fifth, and. I do know a lot about you more than you think. I followed your amateur career when you was an amateur, and I followed your pro career. And when we get inside the ring February 5th, I'm going to make you call me the quote while we inside the ring. We, 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 we,